you'll spend the rest of your days in the dungeon. Hi, my name is Cold Bear and let's start with Dungeons 3. There are three parts of this game and every sequel feels like a better version of the previous one. It's the feeling your girlfriend or boyfriend has about you, until they move on by finding a better version. Anyway, the third game has very positive reviews on Steam, so if you never played any Dungeons game, you can easily start with this one. Game has a twist of a Warcraft 3 style map on top of your dungeon, where you can go and do all your raping. Pillaging. while building up and defending your lair. This is a solid dungeon manager that will keep you entertained for many hours. It's mainly RTS, but it has a pretty decent tower defense element going with it as well. You know, various traps that will drown your enemies in their own blood are present and you are supposed to use them wisely. Every stage introduces a new mechanic and really cool narrative. Game has a random map generator with many custom settings and nice AI. And the campaign will take away about 30 hours away from your boring life. By the way, the campaign's cop mode works really well, so having at least one friend will enhance your experience. Or you can trick your imaginary mother-in-law to play with you. You know, why imagine only a girlfriend when you can imagine more and have more friends this way? Empires of the Undergrowth I'm dedicating my life to the care and preservation of the ant species. Exactly, because here you will be an ant daddy or ant mama and you will help them excavate nests underground, construct tunnels and chambers to store food and raise the ant brood. Missions are narrated from the perspective of a documentary filmmaker studying the ants, who offers intelligent insight into the happenings of the colony and the undergrowth beyond. Yeah, sadly it's not Attenborough, but you get the idea. People in the Steam comments are saying that it's very fun to play, although it can be hard and frustrating at times. You know, ants are no demons, they are really dumb, just like your sister, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really fun game to play. Empires of the Undergrowth is an early access, but the reviews are very positive and that is a rare thing for early access games in general, meaning that this may be the game you were looking for all along. War for the Overworld it's a spiritual successor of Dungeon Keeper. Some even call it Dungeon Keeper Free. Well, it's not. It's similar, but also different in its own way. You know, like King's Bounty, it's not Heroes of Might and Magic, so it's the same here. Here you'll find replayability across many game modes that will keep you entertained for 40 hours or even more, if you are, you know, a bit slow. You see, being smart is not always good. You get more playtime if your IQ is lower. Haha, <laughs> checkmate, Albert Einstein. Here you'll have to take care of various demons, devils, evil wizards, gnomes and other creepy villains, although, again, none of them is as creepy as your mother-in-law. Here you are a dungeon master or dungeon mistress who tries to build a cozy environment for these creatures so they would live in your dungeon and not somewhere else. So let us learn the lesson here, keeping demons in your dungeon, good, keeping little boys in your dungeon, bad. So, please, release them all if you have some, well, not now, tomorrow or next week, take your time, I'm not a monster. Also, in this game you can punish your minions if you like. There can be many reasons why, let's say you can punish them for being not supportive, grumpy or just because you can. There is a device called the meat grinder, use it wisely. Undermaster. Your task in Undermaster is to develop your own dream dungeon. No, not that kind of dungeon. What is wrong with you? Well, this game is not as good looking as the previous titles. It has one amazing feature, or should I say feature, because the game is free. Undermaster runs in your browser and adds another element of dungeon design by requiring players to place objects within a room for it to be effective, such as beds in the dorm, cooking pot in your kitchen, or maybe even vodka in your refrigerator. All that sounds like a Sims game, and to be fair, all dungeon and colony manager games are indeed like like sims, just instead of humans you take care of demons, aliens, crazy people or various abominations. So placing these items in the room along with decorations is also a key factor to improving your glory, which is vital to attracting, yeah, demons and various abominations. And of course, like in many other browser games, you can chase achievements and compete against other players in the leaderboard. Hammer thing. 
No demons this time. Well, except your inner ones that seduce you to go to the fridge and eat stuff just because you are bored. That's why you can outvaith a whole colony of dwarfs. So, speaking about dwarfs, you will manage a clan of mountaineers, establish an epic mining operation, craft legendary swords, and delve deep for greater glory, riches, and danger. From humble beginnings, you start with a handful of dwarfs who need to set up operations quickly. However, as you progress, your small clan will expand and become known through the upper realms for their skill and premium craftsmanship. Allies on the surface will have all manner of requests. You may find yourself being asked to craft a bunch of silver swords against an oncoming vampire army, or for an elf princess coronation they wish for nothing less than a legendary diamond encrusted gold crown of divine ruling with plus free to dexteriness and sexity. <laughs> With plus free to dexterity and sexiness. Well, to be fair, we are all in need of such item because our dexterity and sexiness is not as high as it was before. But don't you doubt yourself, you will always be a sexy devil to me. You look great. Prison Architect. Okay, this time it's not a dungeon, it's a prison. And not a prison of mind you're living in right now, but a real one. Well, real is a relative term here. You may ask, why is this game here? It looks way different than Dungeon Keeper. Let me explain myself. What do you do in Dungeon Keeper? Units spawn automatically, and you build different rooms for your minions while they act around on their own will. You do the same here, like literally the same. Except your inmates do not have as much of free will here. Yeah, you build an amazing maximum security prison where you can be a sadistic tyrant and torture your inmates or you can build I don't know Norwegian prison where inmates live better than people in freedom in most of the countries they at least literally has better TVs and furniture than I do at my home so you know you can help your Eastern European brother out by supporting me on patreon even the smallest amount of support you can financially share is huge to me you will find a link in the description below and oh keep in mind that my patreon supporters are getting special videos only they can access and by becoming a supporter of any tier you will get instant access to them all oxygen not included you'll find that scarcities of oxygen, warmth and sustenance are constant threats to your colony's survival. Guide colonists through the perils of subterranean asteroid living and watch as their population grows until they are not simply surviving, but thriving. You know, like Bear grills in nature, except yeah, you don't need to drink your own piss. Though you can do that if you want in real life, I'm not judging you. Although, if that's the drink of your choice, please feel free not to share any vodka cocktail recipes with it. So here, yeah, just like in Dungeon Manager games, everything in your space colony is under your control, from excavation and resource allocation right down to plumbing and power systems. Resources will begin depleting with your first breath, so be sure to dig fast if you want to live. Keep the psychological impact of survival at bay with fun leisure activities, great accommodations and even better food for your colony. Duplicants each have different and potentially destructive ways of reacting to stress, so be sure to always keep them happy, whatever the cost, or they will go amok and you will have to start all over again. Evil Genius 1 and 2 Games have very similar gameplay to Dungeon Keeper and Theme Hospital. Here you'll need to build your own lair in order to achieve world domination. So, it's like Austin Powers combined with Dungeon Keeper, where you have to assume the role of Dr. Evil. And your evil doings will attract a wide variety of government agencies, so your lair will have to be protected with security systems and various traps. To reach your ultimate goal of world domination, you have to complete missions and steal from around the world to create your super weapon. First part is loved more than the second, but it's quite old. The second part of Evil Genius coincidentally uses the most evil business model available. They released the game at the same time with DLC and asked for additional money for this DLC. That is so wrong, don't feed them. I suggest you buy this game only on sale and not some fake sale with a few percent discount, but for a really low price. Price, otherwise you will be feeding evil with your money. A Game of Dwarves 
It combines Dungeon Keeper and Dwarf Fortress to create a fun, strategy-oriented title. The game puts you in the role of a dwarf ruler who is tasked with reclaiming your people's land. The game is also packed with mysteries and treasures that reward exploration of each game level. The game also borrows some gameplay aspects from Minecraft, and by that I mean that you can borrow not only to every side like in Dungeon Keeper, but also downwards. This adds more, heh, you know deepness to this game. A Game of Dwarfs also has a number of downloadable content add-ons to enhance the base gameplay, and while some Dungeon Keeper fans are disappointed, I recommend to you to be open-minded and try this game. It costs about 2 euros when on sale, that is really low, just about as low as Belarus went recently by hijacking a passenger plane. Space Base Startopia the game is a mixture of economic simulation and empire building strategy paired with classic RTS skirmishes and good dose of humor. And as if maintaining the three space station decks, entertaining the eight alien races and defending against enemy invaders were not enough of a challenge, the dynamic narrator AI commentates the events in a lovely but sharp-tongued manner. Well, that humor, to be fair, is not always top quality, but in general it's very nice. Almost all the negative comments on Steam are coming from people who played the original Startopia game, which is really outdated right now, just like your quarantine-inspired hairstyle, but people who never played the first part, they are mostly happy about it and say that this is a great game. So read the comments carefully before acquiring this one, make sure it suits your playstyle. And now thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time with more epic videos like this one, bye!